Hey guys, so there's no doubt that one of the most highly requested settings for a new historical Total War is Medieval 3. We haven't had a Medieval since Thrones of Britannia, Age of Charlemagne, going all the way back to Medieval 2 Total War. Some of the most popular mods out there right now on the historical games is Medieval, and on all the polls I've seen online, Medieval is generally the one that comes out on top as the next historical game fans would like to see. With Creative Assembly's latest track record, of poor development for like Warhammer 3, community management, especially with the latest DLC debacle and pricing policies, it's questionable whether they could do it justice. But in today's video, we're going to look at the ideal scenario and discuss why I think a Mongol Total War is the answer. Before we get started though, I want to talk about something that is a new permanent feature in my home office. A company called Flexispot that produces standing desks contacted me recently to sponsor the channel and happily sent me the standing desk E8. The whole thing arrived within two days. It took me roughly an hour to put together, get my laptop and microphone all set up. And I have to say, I have been using this ever since. The E8 comes with this really cool adjustable keypad feature. The cable management is top class, and I'm really enjoying being able to mix it up between sitting and standing. It's actually made a huge difference to how I work and how I game. So essentially, if you work from home and you're looking for a standing desk, that is efficient, that is well reviewed, check out the link below to see their products and make use of their latest discounts. Flexispot is celebrating their seventh year anniversary and are giving away an up to 50% discount plus a chance to win a free PlayStation 5. And if you don't like it, there's a 60 day return policy as well, so plenty of time to try it out. Now let's get on to the topic of this video. The Mongol invasion of Central Asia, the Far East, so areas like China and Japan, and finally in Europe, is the perfect ideal setting for a medieval three total war. And here's why. This is a period of time in history that along with the Mongol invasions, which would be the big threat to the world, of course, you have tons of major conflicts happening literally everywhere. Over in Europe, there's the Turkic Celtics of Anatolia battling against the remains of the Eastern Roman Empire. You've got the standoff of Western Catholic powers like the Holy Romans, kingdoms of Sicily, the French and English, all trying to also appease the Papal States. You've got the Reconquista of Spain, the Crusader States with a potential kingdom of heaven showdown there is just so much that could be done here in europe alone to dive into there's also the mongol invasion of china there's the failed mongol invasions of japan and india these are regions of the world that are rarely touched by gaming let alone grand scale total war sure we've had india and empire we've had the shogun games which are accepted as some of the most iconic in the series but nothing like this a mongol total war is ripe for new beautiful mechanics with dozens even hundreds of kingdoms, duchies, beyliks, and clans all warring against each other for power and ultimate supremacy, only to be threatened by the large-scale and terrifying Mongol military might. With games like Shogun 2, Attila, and Three Kingdoms, with the vast scale and campaign map that they've achieved in Warhammer 3, a Eurasia-spanning Mongol total war is completely achievable, and is something that is perfectly suited for a medieval 3 total war. Now, there are, of course, some prerequisites that would need to happen for this. The first one, for me anyway, and I think for a lot of people, is a new Total War engine. Yes, we're all thinking it. The Total War community has been saying it for years, and it's bloody time it happens. All of the games since Empire and Napoleon have suffered one way or another from systems and mechanics that just don't work the way CA intended them to by continuing to use this Warscape engine with its many, many iterations from game to game that has led to a genuine degradation of game play. Rome 2 was the first warning signs of an engine that wasn't suited properly for melee combat, and ever since with Attila, with Three Kingdoms, especially with the Warhammers, we've seen time and time again the engine not being that ideal for melee combat at all. What CA would absolutely need to do, what Medieval 3 would need to succeed, is a new engine built from scratch that can effectively enable different varieties of battles. Land battles with large-scale melee engagements, ranged units with realistic arc of fire and effective impact, ideally the way it was done in Shogun 2 or maybe Medieval 2, and naval warfare, the likes of which we really haven't seen yet. I mean, every game that had naval warfare after Napoleon in a melee 
melee centric kind of way was just straight up avoided hence of course why ca removed them nobody enjoyed them so to come back to this medieval era where naval warfare played a huge role would definitely need a new engine that can facilitate it properly the second prerequisite, I think anyway, is a Mongol style Medieval 3 Total War on the campaign side would need to do away with character focused factions. History was written by the victors and those were individual people, but the best of Total War isn't about individuals, it's about the collective effort of populations, cities, units, armies, alliances, all battling to survive, to achieve objectives and victory conditions. The general is nothing without his army. The Emperor Emperor is nothing without his subjects, and this is a design in which historical games thrive, where immersion and realism is truly achieved, and where gameplay meets the expectations of historical players. That doesn't mean you can't have characters in these games, that doesn't mean you can't have customizable equipment or bodyguards, it just means you're shifting the focus, the immersion factor of the game from this character-led first approach to a collective of, of individual little elements, popular mechanics that all work together that that bring your faction to life modern total war simply does not do this they give you a pre-made character without any sort of family it can't die through the campaign and it doesn't lead a people it represents them it embodies them in every way possible to replace that realism and immersion that previous games in the series used to provide the player is no longer the deciding factor. It's not your ambitions and plans for expansion that matters as much. It's the character's path that's already pretty much laid out for you. You don't really need to think about what might happen in three or five turns. Your strategic depth is limited to what settlement you need to conquer next to get to this resource, what slightly more buffed up unit you need to begin recruiting, or what new AI faction in the middle of nowhere has decided to attack you. And all of that is tied to this character. This character character's history, context, his, you know, visual looks, his, his characteristics, his personality, the kinds of units he has access to. This isn't a faction-centric approach. It is a character-centric one. Medieval 3 would need to go back to a society and culture-led faction and do away with this huge character focus of recent games. We need a technology tree that empowers a progressive campaign that unlocks new types of society, culture, and military power. We need a political system that is creative and is closely tied with the family that you as the players want to form with members. You want to marry off to other factions and turn into military leaders or diplomats or governors. And we need a faction style gameplay that promotes the history of a nation and not the history of one person that's the historical total war that people crave and yearn for that's what a medieval three needs to succeed this is all personal preference, of course, but this is why I don't see Pharaoh as being a truly historical game. This is why I think a lot of people have a lot of doubt about its content. Sure, there are some historical gameplay mechanics and features that are returning, which all looks really great. I'm really pleased CA Sophia is listening enough to do things like add battle standards into the game or make the unit cards look more historically immersive for factions and cultures, but having a bare bones political system with an immortal faction leader that has no family and using the same broken engine again that does not fit truly realistic and enjoyable total war gameplay is just not what historical total war should be like a new historical needs a bit of a renaissance at this point and a Mongol Total War would be the perfect place to do that. Imagine a feudal retinue system with family members able to gain ranks in the military, political power from military success that is tied closely with loyalty and party ambitions. Imagine a 3 to 400 region map of Eurasia with an 8 player multiplayer co-op campaign that is stable and where players can band together to fight off the Mongols or fight each other in other smaller scale wars. The potential for a game like this is truly endless and for me anyway it would be a much if not a bigger cash cow than warhammer 3 ever could be at the end of the day of course ca will do what they want and we'll see whether they actually make a medieval 3 with any of the efforts to make historically realistic immersion in both the campaign and battle gameplay or indeed if they ever attempt to make a game on a new engine whatever happens though what i've laid out here today i think is the ideal medieval 3. it's massive multi-continent campaign it's new battle engine that enables multiple styles of warfare effectively it's proper historical mechanics like formations like progression 
progressive technology that makes an impact, and families. It's all of that done in a polished way that does the fans and the franchise justice. It's an ideal, you know, it's a dream, and whether CA makes it or another company makes it, hopefully it's a dream that comes true one day. And that's essentially it today guys, I wanted to discuss a bit what I think the ideal medieval 3 would be like, what time period it could be set in, the kinds of wars and conflicts, mechanics and features I would hope to see if, you know, CA or another company makes it. I genuinely hope if it does happen it's done right and on a brand new engine, and I hope if it does happen us historical fans are not set up for disappointment. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, give it a like and drop any thoughts or questions in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you think of my ideas for a Medieval 3 Total War and what CA would need to do to make it successful. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button for more Total War content, gameplay, and news just like this. And seriously, if you have a FlexiSpot desk, I'd love to hear what you think. And if you purchase one off the back of this video, I actually really hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.